one thing about CPR is that a lot of times we get very nervous because could we hurt them? What could we do? Can they sue us? And we have a good Samaritan law that protects us as long as if we're doing CPR just in those rooms and not extra, we are protected with the good Samaritan law. Second thing I suggest that the reason it's important to know CPR because who you're gonna help is usually your family member, your person that you're closest to. So it's good to have it. And especially if you're having a baby, it's good to take a class. There are classes out there with um, One Step, um, American Rec, American Rec, I mean American Heart Society and Red Cross that are doing classes. Most of them might be online because of COVID, but for you to get certified, this is not a certification class. For you to get certified, you have to pass the skill test, which someone has to see you and verify it. This one will give you everything you need to know for CPR if you ever need it and you do not need to be certified to administer CPR. Now, the first thing in CPR or any type of emergency is your safety. Is the scene safe? If I see this person, this is gonna be an adult and a child over in a location, am I able to get to them without hurting myself? Because if I hurt myself, then I can't even help that person by just calling. Even just calling 911 is in help that they might need. Talking to them from a distance, don't worry, help is on the way. Um, they're coming, I just call them, is good assistance. Any type of help, don't never put yourself down because you feel like that's all you could have done. If that's all you could do at that moment, that is awesome help. So never put yourself down. So if the scene is safe and I'm able to get to where they're at, the next thing I want to do for an adult and a child, you're going to tap the both shoulders. Hey, hey, are you okay? Are you okay? As I'm tapping, I'm also looking to see any type of movement, anything. If you know their name, you're going to call them by their name. Jonathan, are you okay? Are you okay? If you don't see no movement, now I'm analyzing real quick. I don't see no breathing, no movement. I am going to start, before I start, I'm gonna get someone. If somebody's around me, I'm gonna get nine, I'll have them call 911. If they could get the AD. A lot of us don't live with AD at the home, but in locations, they might have the AD. Parks, we have, Disney World has ADs all over the park. They even have a map that shows you where the first aid and AD classes, I mean, a station is at, okay? Uh, a lot of parks have the AED first aid. So get familiarized, especially if your child is playing sports or cheerleading or you're out there in the park a lot, make sure you know where are the first aid and AED, okay? But at home, we might not have the AED. We might just have to call 911. Maybe if we need the first aid kit, we could bring it, okay? And that's about maybe the basics that we have at home. So again, you look around, the scene is safe. You're gonna start tapping and shouting, hey, 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 Jonathan, are you okay? Are you okay? If he's not breathing, I'm gonna ask somebody, if I don't have nobody, I'm gonna call 911 myself. And even if I ask, Samantha, go call 911 and get the AD if we have it, or go get the first aid kit and come right back. I, I'm still most likely gonna call 911 because if I put it on the speakerphone, that 911 operator is going to talk to me and tell me and guide me, maybe even help count with me. So if that person is not breathing, I am going to start giving CPR. Now for an adult and a child, I'm going to place my hand in between their chest, in between the nipple line, across. My elbows are going to be straight. I'm not going to bend them when I'm doing them. And most likely, not most likely, they're never gonna be on a cart or, or a table like this. They're gonna be most likely on the ground. And I'm just gonna go over them and I'm just gonna start pushing down and count without bending my elbows and I'm gonna count. I'm just gonna give you a demonstration, not to 30, but that's how much we should be counting to. So we do one, two, three, four, 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, all the way to 30. We're going to push down and hard and quick in a nice rhythm continuously. Okay. Now, hands only CPR because uh, not only because of the COVID, but even when you don't have barriers or anything to protect you and that person, hands only CPR is good as well. We want less um, interruptions when we're doing compressions. Now, hands only, if I don't do the breaths, it's going to be five cycles of 30. So I just do 30. I do 30 more, five cycle, which is really a count of 150. It gets exhausted. So that's why one, you count loud. If you have the operator on, they might count with you if you're getting exhausted. If Samantha comes, she might start counting with you because you're getting exhausted. Because just getting up to 30, well, just getting up to 20, I was already out of breath. So 30, five, times before you're going to analyze that person again, before you look and see, are they breathing? Okay. If you know the person or the child or the infant and you want to give the breath, make sure you have a barrier between them. If it's a child or an adult, you're going to pinch their nose and give two breaths in between the 30 compressions. So I do 30, one, two, three to 30. Pinch the nose, tilt the head, two breaths. I do 30 again. Pinch, two breaths, that's two. And I'm going to do five cycles. Now, some of you might say, well, do we need the breaths? As long as you're doing the compressions, you're good without the breaths. The compressions is still giving them oxygen. It's still giving them that oxygen that they need and trying to get the heart rhythm back. And all the organs are getting filled with the oxygen. So the breaths are not as necessary as much as the compressions. The interruptions of compressions is what we're trying to say not to do as much. So try to do the compressions. And if you don't feel comfortable doing the breaths, that's fine. Now that's called hands-only CPR, which we're just doing compressions, okay? So remember, is the scene safe? Yes, it is. You go over there, you're gonna do tap and shout. Hey, hey, Jonathan, Jonathan, are you okay? Somebody's around you, call 911, get the AD and come back, Samantha. But if nobody's around you, you just call 911, put the phone down, put it on speaker and have them talk to you. You're gonna place your arm directly across their chest, straight across. Now, it's not gonna bend. I'm just too high up here, but it stays straight over them and you're just gonna go straight down into them and you're gonna count to 30. If you're not comfortable with the breaths, you're just gonna continue 30, one, and then 30, and that's two, and 30, that's three, or you could count straight to 150. Then you're gonna analyze the person. Remember, if you ever do CPR, you always wanna take them to the hospital and make sure. Now, there's several reasons why you might stop. One, Samantha came, now she's helping, or EMS came and they're helping, they took over. They're going to ask you a question. How many counts did you do? They might ask you all kinds of questions. So try to keep that in mind. Two, you're exhausted. You cannot. There's nobody else around you. You can't no more. We don't want you to be victim number two. So you can't no more. That's the best help you could do. That is the best you could do. Don't feel bad because that's all you gave them. Okay. Or three, the person comes around again okay so those are the main reasons why we stop cpr now for the infant it's a little bit different so i'm gonna put my mannequin down jonathan <laughs> and i'm gonna take my infant now for the infant it's gonna be a little different it's gonna still be 30 to 2 but the difference is that when we first we check the scene scene is safe we're gonna tap on their foot because that's the most sensitive part of their body. And we're gonna analyze, I'm looking to see if I see any movement, any breathing. Nothing, I'm gonna call 911 or get help. Go call 911.
911, get the AD, come right back. The reason you tell them to, oh, identify the person too. Identify them. You know them by name, Samantha, go get the AD, get help. But if you don't know them by name, you with the blue shirt, with the glasses, go get help, come right back, get the AD. Call 911. Make sure you tell them to call 911. Florida is very universe with so many different countries in our state. And call the emergency might be a different number than 911. So make sure you tell them, call 911, okay? So, okay, now you analyze the scene, scene is safe, you're able to, you're gonna tap and shout, no movement, you're gonna go call 911, put the phone down on speaker, and now I'm gonna do compressions. The other difference is that I'm gonna use two fingers, whether it's two thumbs or two fingers, across the chest, between the nipple line, and I'm gonna start counting to 30. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, all the way to 30. It is exhausting, so count loud, because if somebody comes, they can help you count. If the operator's on the phone, they will continue helping you count. So count nice and loud. Plus, it keeps you in rhythm as well, and it helps you stay on track, okay? Now, the other difference between the breeding, if I was going to do the breeding for the child, the infant, is that, one, I cannot pinch their nose. So I have to put my mouth and cover their nose and mouth and give puffs, two puffs, two breaths, and then continue CPR. So those are the difference that I'm gonna tap on the foot and I'm gonna cover their mouth and nose with my mouth, and I mean, with my mouth, okay? And continue CPR, but the same, five cycle, 30 compressions, or just 150 straight compressions, no stopping because I don't want to use a barrier. I don't want to do um, the breaths. And that's hands-only CPR, which is acceptable, okay? And that is CPR. Now, we're going to just cover real quick if the child or infant is choking. If they are choking, and let's say they are not um, coughing, if they're coughing, remember that you and they're in a high chair, take them out just for in case, plus you give them more airway to open up, okay? They're coughing, it's okay, it's okay, they're coughing. But once they stop coughing and they're not making noise and they obviously choking, something is going on, they're not, you know, they just got that stare, they stop um, like almost breathing, that's when you gotta do the abdominal thrust. You're gonna make a U, and cover their chin. Now make sure you don't have your fingers all loose. So that's why we say make a U. And you're gonna cover their chin like for U M. Those fans will know why. Anyway, so you cover their chin and then you're gonna put the baby across your forearm. Now, because I don't have the upper body strength, I would take the baby and I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna use my thigh to lean the baby on my thigh and bring her or him as low as possible so gravity could help me. So I have the baby, I'm sitting down and I'm gonna give five blows in the back, five blow, um, back blows. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm gonna take, cover the baby. See how I'm covering the baby? Like a little pancake. And I'm gonna flip it to the other forearm. And I'm gonna do five thrusts, one, two, three, four, five. Again, I'm sitting down because I'm not gonna have the upper strength to do this. Some of you might, and that'd be great. And then I'm gonna look, I don't see no object. I'm gonna flip the baby again and do five, one, two, three, four, five. And I'm gonna continue flipping back and forth until the object comes out. That's for the infant. If you ever have to do the abdominal thrust for an infant, a child, an adult, go to the hospital, have them checked out, make sure nothing erupted coming up. For the child, 
you're going to have to maybe go down on your knee and go into there where the belly is at. You're going to make a fist. You're going to place it by the belly button and you're going to take your other hand and wrap it around and just go in and up into a J movement, in and up to the object. See, I did it a little too hard. That would make me, you don't want to see my breakfast. Okay, so in and up until the object comes out. And once the object comes out, again, take them to the hospital. If it's an adult, you're gonna do the same thing. The only thing is you're gonna to try to put your leg in between theirs. So if they collapse, they slide down and not just fall onto the ground. And you're gonna do again, a fist by the belly button, get your other hand around them. You're gonna wrap it around them. So it's gonna look like this, this around, and you're gonna do that J and in and up movement, J and in and up movement until that object comes out. If you are pregnant, your belly, you're gonna take the person on the side, protect your belly. And I still could go and reach over them but I'm going to leave my belly on the side and I'm still going to go up and J. Now, if you're the person that's choking and you're pregnant or you cannot go around that person because they bigger in stature, then you're going to put them against a wall. This is a wall. And you're going to go in between their chest, in between, and you're just going to do a domino thrust right there in between their chest until now be careful in front of you so you got to be careful because that item you know yeah i know nasty right anyway either way whichever way you make sure you take them to the hospital there is a universal sign which is like this that nobody uses no kid uses it Infant, of course, is not going to use it. And adults get embarrassed and they walk away and they're trying to clear the throat. They don't use it. A child might put a fist and they're like ah, staring like a dead stare. The lips might get purple. You know there's not, no noise. If there's noise or coughing, let them cough it out. They clear the airway. Most likely everything is fine. But if they're not making any noise, they're not... Um, no sound at all, no cough, and they have that stare, do the abdominal thrust. An adult might walk away and try to clear it themselves. They, they're not gonna most likely do the sign. If you see them, ask, hey, I'm here to help you, okay? A lot of times, if we're not able to help them, we could call 911, have somebody else help, guide them, even with CPR, you could guide somebody if you can. Let's say you have your arm that's hurting. Look, you do compressions in between the nipple line and you could guide them. And always remember, you stay safe so you could help them as well. Never put yourself in a dangerous situation. And that is CPR and our car seat. And I thank you so much for having us here today. Remember to stay safe. And if you ever have any questions, please feel free to reach out to, um, to us. And I know they have our email and our phone number, and you could always contact us at Memorial. JDCH.com is our email, I mean, our website for other information if you need it. Thank you. Bye.